Hello, people that exist. This is what it's all led up to. Every single Rick Riordan book I read, and a lot that I didn't document. I will list spoilers in the description. And here goes. I'm starting with the things that are not novels because there's only, like there are only three that aren't novels that I like more than other novels. Okay, I begin. 2.6 stars. Kane Chronicles Survival Guide. Oh, and you might as well include 2.8 stars. Percy Jackson Ultimate Guide. So, the reason I have such animosity toward these two is because, like some others, they don't have much reason to exist. But unlike others, They aren't fun or entertaining. So, I hate the idea of these, but I'm not rating them off the idea. Rating them off how there is nothing fun in this. And then this may be one moment, but that's not enough to make up for the complete crap that the rest of it is. Okay. Moving on. As you see, this is going to be a really long video, so I'm going to try to get through these next non-novels quick. Camp Jupiter Classified, three stars. And the reason I don't like it is because I just see no reason for it to exist. Even though it's entertaining, it doesn't really provide information. It just kind of is there. Okay, moving on. Hotel Valhalla Guide to the Norse Worlds. I think I rated this 3.4 stars. And I just, I don't know. No reason it ranks any other level than anything else. Just. Don't see much reason for it to exist, even though it does provide good information. Okay, might as well just do the next ratings for this one. So I have less editing to do, which is literally just switching the transitions. But the Demigod Files, and I really like the stories. These are good. But then, like, there's so much other stuff that I don't see much reason for it. Okay, here, on to what I would rate four-star category on Goodreads because of how I do it. Three stars is all the way down to 2.6 and up to 3.4. Okay, so we have Brooklyn House Magician's Manual. I like the fun little plot that's going on. That's 3.6 stars. Then we have a pretty full 3.8 stars. Oh, I said 3.8. That other one was 3.6. Okay, nine from the nine worlds. I love the cover. It's cool, and my cheeks are really hot for some reason. Probably because I was sitting in a hot car for a while. But, um, yeah, all the stories are fun, but, again, I'm just, they're a bit, in this circumstance, they're a bit too short to be great. Camp Half-Blood Confidential. Hmm, enjoyable. And finally, for 3.8 stars... The Demigod Diaries. So, I love the bigger cast of characters in these stories here. So, let's see. All of the other stuff, most of it don't really doesn't really need to exist, but I'm fine with it. So, Diary of Luke Castell and Great. Percy Jackson and the Staff of Hermes. Pretty good. Leo Valdez and the Quest for Buford. Amazing. And well, also, like, Leo is so ridiculous. Like, he's smart, but he is so unwise. He put both 
both the normal and the extra in the same place. It's so stupid. Okay. And then finally, Son of Magic, that thing is great. Okay, moving on to the novels. 4.2 stars. My least favorite of every Rick Riordan novel. Middle grade. Is The Sea of Monsters. It's enjoyable, but less so than any of the others. Yeah, not much to say. And then, this might surprise some people, but The Sword of Summer. This is here because I feel like it's a bit boring. It's just not as fun as the other books in the trilogy. Okay. So, let's move on to the 4.4s. There are two here. I do not know why I'm doing some sort of noise like clap or snap or I don't know, but I am. Okay. The Dark Prophecy. 4.4 stars. It's fun, entertaining, but the least so of all of them. Because it's like, Commodus is the least threatening. He's just like, Nero is, as with the last book, just terrifying. Just because of how cunning he is. And then the third emperor. I'm saying this because you might not have read book three. And they don't want to spoil anything. Stop it, Aaron. You are not this insane. Okay. Um, there. Sorry for the noise. But, um, he yeah, had just the least fun of them. The Red Pyramid. As with a lot of these other trilogy openers. The other trilogy opener. It's not as fun. It's good. No, it's good. Just not as good as the others. Okay, moving on to the vast 4.6 star category. And so we come to the first ones rated six stars. And these are the only ones that aren't novels of the or rated five stars, 4.6, but I rated them five on Goodreads because of my system. Demigods and Magicians. First story, eh. Second story, pretty good. Third story, it's the last time Percy has to save the world. not as big as a threat as Gaia. And, as you may have noticed, I have mentioned every single series so far, except for Heroes of Olympus novels. Those are coming up soon. Okay. Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. Not Daniel Green. I'm not Daniel Green. Sorry, I'm coming insane. Okay. Yeah, the God stories are twisted, but also pretty good. Amazing. Very good. Like some of these are really good. I like the titles, but also um, Psyche is just awesome. Like, imagine doing that. Okay. And now, at this point, we get to the first candidate that ever was created. The Lightning Thief. This novel started it all in a, an amazing, 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 perfect-ish fashion. But that is perfect-ish. And... No scene could be cut out, but I feel like it's just a bit, I don't know. It isn't as action-packed as some of the others, and this may surprise people now, 
what's coming up after it. But it's the Hidden Oracle. I enjoy it more, mostly because of Apollo. He's hilarious, and his character arc is just perfect throughout this series. But, um... And just the idea. I think it's the second most inspired of the series. And yes, the Heroes of Olympus may be my favorite, but I feel like it's the least inspired. Okay. And finally for this category, if I can get it out, is the Hammer of Thor. Great action, climax, everything. Just a lot of the stuff in between is not as good. Wait, is this the... Let me see. Well, also, I really like the time in Alfheim. Time in Alfheim. Okay, moving on, if I can ever get the book back in and the next one out, to the 4.8 stars. This is the final section of this video. Do the second one. That'll come up soon. The Tyrant's Tomb sits here. At the middle spot in my ranking of all of these. My original Goodreads review was totally wrong. Just because the climax is perfect does not mean that the rest of it is. It's a bit slow paced and boring until late in. And I would not say it was worth the one and a half year wait. I would say it's pretty good though. Okay. Moving on to the first in the Heroes of Olympus in both ranking and series. This thick thing. The Lost Hero is underrated, I would say. There's a lot of good action and that thing with the Cyclops and Mugasket. Leo is just perfect there. But And I love how everyone gets a time to save the others. And this will be a spoiler right here. Um, and I'll tell you when the spoiler ends. or Actually, you'll just see when it moves on. Okay, right here. So, they each get a time to save each other. First, I believe it's I'm not exactly sure of the order, but I think it's Leo first with the Cyclops in Chicago. Yeah. Then goes to Piper when they're against Media. And then finally to Jason against Midas. So, yeah. I think it's a really well-crafted story, and I like the new characters. Moving on. The Throne of Fire is the last book I will discuss in this video. Firstly, the cover is amazing. Secondly, Ra is awesome. And thirdly, thirdly, firstly, secondly, weasels are sick. No, but really, it's, it's great. Okay, thank you for watching this video. And this is the last one of this video, but I'm about to shoot the second. Because I don't really bother with things called editing. Hello, would you kindly subscribe to me? If you already have, then I thank thee. If you don't want to, I won't hold a grudge. But if you press like,